Howdy! How's everybody out there in YouTube land today? We're going to work, be working on a little project here. I've got a five by seven canvas and I'm going to show you how to lay out a pattern and paint a design on a five by seven canvas. These are canvas boards. I got mine at Michael's. You can get a most art store where they're selling canvases. Um, I got these when they was on sale a few months ago. They have sales all the time over there. And I used a coupon and uh, got them on the cheap and makes a nice little craft project, uh, especially if you know somebody that likes quilts and maybe you're not a quilter, but uh, you'd like to get them something that they would really cherish and enjoy. So I took a five by seven canvas. And for this kind of a project, your straight edge is your best friend. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna figure out what design you wanna use. Now this particular design is called Snuggle Buddy. And what I did is I wanted a square in the center of it. My design had nine squares on it. And so I figured, well, okay, one inch to the square would be three inches crossed and three inches this way. So I know I'm gonna have a border on here. I started out by marking one inch in from each end and make it a line across. That left me three inches right here in the center. I had two inches on this end and two inches on this end that I needed to get rid of to make my design. So I measured in one inch and two inches on each side and I made my lines. And I did that on the other side as well. That left me my little block here that's three inches by three inches in the center. Now my borders, I'm going to put different colors of paint in these borders to brighten them up. And I made my marks one inch two inches and then i already had the three inch line over here and made my lines across then i did the same thing going the other direction one inch in two inch in for my line here and made my lines that gave me three six nine squares all right so it's just simple math using a ruler and a pencil then I had my nine little blocks here and I started out making a mistake because I thought at first that all my my lines should just go diagonal across this way and that is not true because this pattern um, some lines should go this direction and some lines should go that direction so you just have to look at your pattern and see what you're doing so I went back and I'm going to be using two different colors here in in my pattern and for one color, I'm, I put an X in the box where that color goes on that uh, triangle piece. And over here, it goes up here in this corner. Then I looked at my pattern for the middle row and I saw that my line needed to go this way. So I erased the other line, put my line in this way and made my X where my color is going to go. The middle box didn't have any, it's, it's a one solid box. It didn't have different colors in it. So I erased my line in there. Then this box, I had to change direction on my line. So I erased the one line, made a line go in this direction, and put my X in the side that the color goes in. And the same thing down here. I had to erase a line, put another line go in the other direction, and make an X. So pay attention to how your pattern lays when, when you go to do this, and you'll save yourself some time. Fred is my co-host today. You probably hear him in the background. He's having himself some kind of a snit fit. He can see me from where he's at. I'm, not that that would make any difference. If the, the door was closed, he would be having a temper tantrum. So until such time as he decides to hush, we're gonna have to listen to him, I guess. Um, now, we're gonna start laying some color in here. And you're going to want to be very precise with your lines. You can't have paint slopping over your lines. So I've got my micro brushes. You've probably seen me use my micro brushes before. I get my micro brushes from Welburn Gourd Farms. Um, that it's just a little piece of foam on the end of this little plastic rod. But boy, you, you know, I put off buying these for a long time because I thought, what good are them things going to be? But I'll tell you what, I wouldn't take all the tea in China for one of them. I love these things. 
Now, what I'm using for paint, it's acrylic, and this is Martha Stewart's uh, pearl paint. I love this stuff, and I think you're going to stop making it, and it breaks my heart. <laughs> I think this stuff is the berries. Um, I've got two different shades of pink, two different shades of blue, a yellow, and a purple color. Now, I'm going to do my, my design on, in the center of it, pink and blue. And where my X's are, those are going to be blue. And I'm going to use this, um, this color blue here. Um, it's called Gazing Ball Blue. And I'm going to put a little paint down here on the desk, on the silicone mat, because it mops up good. There we go. A little bit of paint out there. And I'm going to paint all those X's with the Gazing Ball Blue. And this is where your micro brush comes in handy because you want your lines to be very precise and they're going to ride right along where you put your pencil marks in. I always outline first and fill the centers in last. And if you need to move your canvas around so you get a better aim on it, well, do that. Now, I'm going to be laying quite a bit of paint in here. It may, it may take two coats, but I, I'm going to cover my pencil marks up. And I don't want to yell at Fred because I'll blow your eardrums out. <laughs> he generally eventually stops. When he figures out that he's not going to get my attention. It's either one of two things. either stops or it gets worse. I hate to have to stop the show to correct my unruly bird. Now, this one is going to go from this edge over here. Now, you wouldn't have to paint it with a micro brush. If you're better with a bristle brush, you want to use a, a bristle brush, hair brush, whatever you want to call them, um, to do it, have at it. But I find that these micro brushes are so precise, and it keeps me in the lines. If I get to using a brush with hairs on it or bristles on it, then I get over my lines and start making a mess. Like I say, I'm laying a nice layer of paint in there. I don't want to see canvas through it. I don't want to see pencil lines through it. I want it laid in there nice and thick. And if it takes it a little longer to dry, that's fine. I'm not trying to rush the project. Now on this one, my X is up here in this corner, so that's where I'm going to lay in the paint. And bring it down here. Now, I got over just a little bit. I have a clean brush over here. Got a little overzealous right there in that one spot. I'm trying to keep it just as perfect as I can keep it. We'll lift that off of there. Just that simple. When it's wet, you can move it around. Yes, it's going to take a few minutes to paint this, so you're just going to need to be patient. Maybe I'll tell you some stories. Tell you stories about growing up on the farm there, spending time with Granny. My Granny was a quilter. She made a quilt for every one of her children and her grandchildren. She had seven children, 
and I don't even know how many grandchildren she had. Lord have mercy, there was a mess of us. But they all lived far off. And came to visit once in a while. I always enjoyed when my cousins come to visit because I didn't have playmates where I was. We got out in the country, buddy, and there, there wasn't nobody around. And uh, so my cousins come to visit. It was a lot of fun to see them. I think I enjoyed seeing them far more than they enjoyed seeing me. <laughs> but uh, I get a couple hours of enjoyment playing with the cousins on Sunday afternoons once in a while when they'd show up. My granny, she really looked forward to Sundays because she figured that her some of her children was coming to visit and bring grandkids, you know. And many, many Sundays nobody showed up and it would just break her heart. So I'm here to tell you that if you have grandparents or you have uh, mom, dad, Make time for them. Get out there and see them. They'd really enjoy that. I remember many, many of a Sunday that it would get to be about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. She knew nobody was coming. And she'd just sit there and cry. When I got up about 13 years old, I'd try to kind of get them off to one side and talk to them a little bit and tell them, look, she sits here wishing that she had visitors and y'all ought to take turns coming up to see her on a Sunday. But they didn't pay no attention to me. They did as they pleased. I often wonder after she passed away, if they thought about it, most of them are dead and gone now, I guess. But I figured as they got older and their kids didn't come to visit, maybe it dawned on to them a little bit that they should have paid a little bit more attention to the mom. Well, my dogs is acting up I don't know what he heard was upsetting the dogs are generally pretty quiet and don't bark unless there's something to bark at I got the front door open here nice day out today it's a little breezy outside but uh, it's coming from the direction away from the front door so I'll keep the front door open here and let a little fresh air in the house for a change. Finally got all the heat turned off in the house. It's supposed to storm the next couple of days. and If I need to, I can turn the heat back on, but I don't think it's supposed to get cool. It's just supposed to rain. But if it gets too damp, I need to dry it out a little bit. Yeah, I miss my granny because she taught me an awful lot of stuff. My mother did not like her because it was her mother-in-law. And she didn't like the way she cooked. She didn't like the way she cleaned. She didn't like nothing. I don't remember a time or two she bit granny's head off. I guess my mother is doing the best that she knew how to do, but Lord have mercy. I look back on that and think, man, oh man. She had a lot of room for improvement. My granny was more of a mother to me than my own mother was. There, we got all those little blue ones laid in. 
that's looking pretty. I like that pearlescent paint on there. Now, I'm going to take the blue while I'm at it, and I'm going to get in these corners, these squares in the corners here, and paint them blue to match. I'm trying to be pretty straight with this, although I think I'm getting a little tricky. <laughs> Fred's making some kind of bird call. He's heard birds outside calling, and he picks up all kinds of bird calls. He sings too, he, but or whistles, I guess I should say, he whistles tunes, and it's his rendition of tunes. He doesn't actually whistle the real tune. He's got a rendition of Sesame Street that he whistles. I've tried my best to teach him the right way, and he's not, not having it. And same thing with, um, I'll be there to get you in a taxi, honey. He whistles that, but it's his rendition. It's not uh, It's not one you'd recognize. And he's got, he's got a rendition of... Uh, Camp Town Ladies that he whistles too. And I, I recognize him when he whistles him. Nobody else would know what he was doing. Me and him have our own special language, I guess. Just keep brushing that paint in there. Cover all that canvas up. Okay, now I got two corners done, and we'll get another corner up here. I'm trying to keep my headset um, cord out of the paint. going to be doing some gardening over the weekend once the storm rolls through that they're talking about. I've got some strawberry beds to mulch and I've got turn the dirt in the fabric pots that I do my garden in. And start getting ready to lay my garden in. I was looking at the weather for the next couple of weeks. They're not calling for it to get cold anymore. There shouldn't be any frosting. So I might be safe once this weekend hits and the thunderstorms are over that I can lay in my garden. I'm waiting for the ground to warm up some though because it's been blasted cold up until the last couple of days here. I'll take a few days for the ground to warm up. Keep pulling that paint up off the mat and putting it on the canvas, filling in my little areas. I'm leaving a little bit of wave to that paint when I set it in there. Kind of like an oil paint, even though it's acrylic. Just give it a little texture look to it. That helps that pearlescence pop out. Now, I'm going to wipe my micro brush down, clean my paint up off the mat, and go in with another color. We got the gazing ball blue laid in. And now, on these ones where it's got the little triangles. My other color is going to be a pink. And let's see, this one is pink taffeta, and the other pink 
is antique silk. I think I'll go with the antique silk on this one. And my bottle's clogged up here, so we'll get that opened up. Ooh. Well, probably way too much. But we'll start there. Yeah, get a little paint on my I'm going to do this as a matter of fact I'm going to do this a little different let me look at something here real quick well easy for me to say first I got to get the notifications off the desktop and I want to look at something here. Um, yeah, that'll work. Exactly what I was planning to do. All right. That's what I wanted to know. Now, I'm going to lay in my paint, my triangles here. Right up to the pencil line. Not that it would matter much because the one right next to it is going to have pink paint too, but there we go. I'm leaving it nice and thick to give it some texture. Now, Come right down on this one. Lay it right in next to that blue. Just like that. Now this one gets to be pink. If you got somebody in your life that likes quilts and enjoys quilt patterns, this is something that they'd really appreciate because they know how intricate the designs are when they're sewing them. And to have you paint a design with a pretty quilt pattern on it shows that you Appreciate the intricacy of the work that they do. Boy, I remember Granny and her quilts. She had bags of garments that, uh, you know, people had outgrown or wore out or whatever, cotton fabrics, and she'd cut all them up and make quilt pieces out of them. Now that center piece, I may do in another color. I don't know yet. I have not made up my mind. Because I'll probably use another color or two on the borders and I may do something in the center to match up with the borders.
but I've still got one of Granny's quilts that she made me. It's wrapped up upstairs. Every once in a while, I'll get it out and lay it on the bed for a while, and then I'll pack it back up. But she did everything by hand. She didn't do anything on a sewing machine. And she had cataracts, and her eyes were real bad, and she had arthritis in her hands. And she would sit there a lot of times and cry. She was in so much pain. And I remember she used uh, Watkins horse liniment on her legs. She had arthritis in her knees so bad. And she'd wrap her legs up with uh, old T-shirts and douse them with that Watkins horse liniment. And the house always smelled like Watkins horse liniment. And she claimed that that helped ease the pain in her legs. And I can't even imagine the pain she had in her hands because I've got arthritis in my hands. And it hasn't bent my hands up yet, but the day's coming. And she couldn't thread needles anymore. And I would thread her needles for her. And um, I'd spend the weekends. I'd go down on Friday night. And then I was back and forth to the house on Saturday because I had to do my housework and gardening work and that sort of thing. But I'd be back on Saturday night, spend the night with her, and then I'd spend most of the day Sunday with her. And um, I'd keep her needles threaded. And on Sunday, I'd spend most of my day that I was there with her threading needles for her because I knew that she'd be sewing all week long. And she'd need lots of needles threaded. And it was such a problem for her to try to thread them with her cataracts. I remember when they came out with what they called the self-threading needle. And it had a little um, catch at the end of it that would catch the thread. And then you pull it down into the needle. I think they still got those. Um, but um, I got her some of them, and she hated them things. She said she couldn't keep the thread in the needle, that it would pop back out, and them things would break and everything else, and she hated them. <laughs> so she used them in a pinch. You know, if she ran out of the ones I'd threaded for and she couldn't get a needle threaded, she'd have to use them. But she didn't appreciate those needles very much. She pieced every quilt piece by hand and then sewed the squares together. I'm going to come in here and do these squares in, in pink. And as you see, she's starting to come together to look like a little quilt pattern. Now, I have done some quilting in my time, actually piecing quilts together and all that. I've done them with a sewing machine, though. I'm not as bold as Granny was to try to do everything by hand. And uh, the other ones that I have done have been all woven. I you know, weave my quilt pieces, uh, triangles mainly, triangle squares, and then piece them together. I make big blankets out of them. I made a big one several years ago and gave it to a friend of mine that I had done out of alpaca fiber from my alpaca that I had out on the farm. And, uh, I've got one in a cupboard someplace here, one of my many closets in this house that I made. It's a big, huge, heavy thing out of alpaca. Yeah, a little outline. 
on light in there. Fill in the center. Might get textured. Pop that pearlescent paint right there. And then flip it around to the other side. If you actually made a blanket this pattern and did it in the pink and blue, add a little maybe yellow and purple to it, make a beautiful baby blanket. I've got a pattern for a loom that I want made. It's a special loom. I've got all kinds of looms here in the house, but there's a special one that I want made. And haven't been able to find anybody that will make it for me. And it's, it's pretty simple to do if you've got tools to make it. Um, I probably need to talk to some of my woodworking friends about it. And show them what I want. Ask them what they charge me to make it and mail it to me. But nobody local seems to be willing to, to do it. I'll tell you what, trying to find help around here in these parts, shoot. I've never seen so many people that turn their nose up at making a little money to help somebody. I mean, it's not like I'm asking anybody to do it for free. I had, a, a, well, when I first started looking for somebody to try to do some yard work and, and help me with uh, some stuff around here in my landscaping, it took me two years to find somebody. I finally found a guy that did landscaping work, and he did a good job, and I paid him every time, you know, Hand me a bill, I'd dole him out some cash, and um, I had him lined up to do some work here a couple years ago, and he wouldn't even call me back. Just cut me off cold turkey, and wouldn't you know? I tried to get him to even recommend somebody. I said, "Look, if you're not going to call me back, you know, to finish up this work here, that." You said you do. Can you at least recommend somebody else? He wouldn't even return my calls. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what's up with that, but oh well. So I've asked around a time or two about some other people to do something, and you can't get nothing done. I'm, I've got a company that comes in and mulches my front yard for me. They was here last year. I called them and got them on schedule to do it this year, but they haven't called me to tell me what day they want to come yet. So if I don't hear from them in the next couple of days, I'll be calling them to see where I'm at on the schedule. Okay, now we've got two blocks here and two blocks here, a block here and block here, and then one in the center. So I'm thinking that I can take a color here and a color out here and match it in the center. And then the other four blocks can be another color. And I've got another shade of blue, another shade of pink, and I've got yellow and purple. And I'm thinking yellow and purple. Um, let's go with purple first. And we'll do the outside, outside, and middle with the purple.
That's what I'm thinking. I mean, there is no real right or wrong to this. It's whatever you make it. You can do them any colors you want. You can do them red, white, and blue, and do it patriotic. You could do it red, green, and white for Christmas. Whatever floats your boat. St. Patrick's Day, green and white. And I don't know. Whatever color you want to put with that, I guess. Maybe a couple shades of green. Kelly green and a light green. Another thing you could do is once it's dry, if you've got pretty rubber stamps, the little teeny tiny rubber stamps, some kind of pattern, little flowers or something, you could even stamp part of your design with stamps to make it um, patterned. You know, let's say we've done uh, white and I don't know. Pick a dark color. Maybe a navy blue and white or something on the white pattern. Uh, you could put like little flowers. If you had a rubber stamp to do it with. Or if you, you know, if you paint real well freehand and you want to paint little flowers on it. When I was real little, my granny made me nightgowns out of old flower sacks. They used to, back in the old days, sell flour in sacks, and they had them real pretty colors with uh, flowers on them and different designs. I know one she made me, I'll never forget it. I don't know why it stuck in my mind so much, but it had little foxes on it, little red foxes. And um, she'd take on the... The bottom of the flower sack where the seam was, she would cut a neck hole in that and she would uh, seam around the edges of it with um, bias tape. Then she put a little rickrack on it to decorate it up a little bit, make a little tie in the front there, tie up the neck, little bow. And uh, she cut armholes in the sides of it. And she cut off the bottom of the flower sack to make little sleeves. And then she put a hem in it. And I was so proud of my little flower sack 90s that she made me. Lord have mercy. Now I've grown up and become a big girl. I couldn't get my big toe in one of them things to <laughs> I used to tease some friends of mine. They had a couple little girls, and every year at, at uh, Easter, they'd take them out shopping to get their little Easter outfits, you know. And I, I would tease them about it was time for their new flower sack dress, their pillowcase dress for Easter. And I, I tell them, boy, you could save you a lot of money if you just get you some pillowcases. And they could use them on the bed all year, and then at Easter time, you make a dress out of it. <laughs> oh, them kids thought I was awful.
but I guess that's changing times because I would have been just as proud as I could be if Granny had made me a pillow sack dress for Easter. I thought that was really neat. Okay, now flip it around here. And get this edge. You see, I take that purple right up there next to the blue. Lay it in right next to it. Come right along our pencil line. Get your outline laid in there. Now once this is all painted and dries, I'm going to give it a few days to cure. Then I will spray it with Krylon to protect it. And it can be framed. Or it could just have a hanger put on the back of it and it's ready to hang on the wall. Once you get the outline of it done there next to the other colors, then it's just a matter of coming in and laying your paint in. Filling in your spot. And then I, I add my texture to it. Texture it up a little bit. Oh, now he's wolf whistling. You hear Fred wolf whistling? He's doing everything he knows how to do to get my attention. He does not like being separated from me. The bird has separation anxiety, something fierce. Even though he can see me from where I'm sitting here, he's looking right at me. I guess when I leave the house, he has a fit because when I get home, I can hear him clear out the back door. I don't leave often. <laughs> okay, now, let's texture it up a little bit. And so this extra paint that we got on the palette. Okay, it's looking good there. Now, like I say, I got the other four places to go, and those I'm going to do with yellow. Wipe down the brush and wipe down the desk. There we go. That's how simple that is now. Come in with the yellow. This is called duckling. All right. Now set that aside. Get my brush. Come in with some yellow. Line up next to the other colors. Make sure that we get the pencil lines all covered up.
Try to keep it as straight as you can. I don't know how much street noise you can hear here, but sirens going off in the background. I went up to vote this morning for early voting up at the courthouse. I thought, well, they open at 8.30, so oh, I'll get there at 8.30. I can get in and get out, no problem. Well, I got up there, Lord have mercy, there's all this crowd up at the courthouse I ever seen. I've never seen that courthouse that busy. And it took me few minutes to find a parking place. I finally got a parking place and got in there. Well, the place where you vote. I was the first one in there. Wasn't nothing going on there. I asked myself, well, what's all the hoopla that got all that traffic up here? And I guess there was a fire south of town. Some bushes caught fire. And I was trying to figure out who to blame. So everybody was up to the courthouse this morning. I guess lawyers and all kinds of folks is up there. I don't know what was going on. I thought, Lord have mercy. I mean, as long as no property burnt down. It doesn't sound like a whole lot of damage if some bushes burnt, for goodness sakes. If it had been somebody's house or barn or. livelihood business then i can see that yes okay we need to figure out what's going on here but bushes to bring the whole town out to the courthouse are you kidding me priorities people priorities <laughs> maybe i just didn't know the whole story on it or something but man it seemed like a big ado over not much I believe in picking my battles. I guess we could talk about vacations a little bit while I'm doing this. I haven't had a vacation since 1982. And if you can call going to dog shows a vacation, which isn't much of a vacation as far as I'm concerned, because you're taking care of dogs the whole time you're gone, then 1983, or no, 1987, yeah, it's the last last dog trip that I went on, going to dog shows. But... Uh, when I was a kid, we used to take vacations every year. And we didn't even start doing that until I was 12. My mother got cancer when I was 12 years old, and she decided she was going to see some sights before she went. And uh, she had relatives live down in Florida. So we go down to Florida every year. Man, I tell you what, some of them vacations wasn't much of a vacation. And they never were really much of a vacation for me because she, my mother was rough on me. And she complained to me the whole time we was on vacation. Dad tell her after a while of that, leave her alone. Let her enjoy the trip the way she wants to enjoy it. But I wanted to sleep because I worked so hard on the farm. And, you know, between farm and school, I was like to work to death. So when we get on vacation, that was my opportunity to get some sleep. And as soon as the car started rolling, I was out. And she wake me up and go yelling at me that, hey, this is supposed to be an educational experience for you. And you need to be watching the sights and 
as soon as she turned around, I go back to sleep. <laughs> Drug the canvas through the paint there, had to clean up my mess. But um, I remember one year, Lord have mercy, she had made up her mind. She, her and dad had gone on one trip by themselves and they had gone down to um, someplace in South Carolina where you get on a ferry boat and it takes you out to some island someplace. And then you catch another ferry boat and it takes you down further south um, I'm not real sure where it let off. I mean, it's been so many years ago that it's not fresh in my mind anymore. But anyway, she made up her mind. She wanted the kids, me and my little brother, to see this island. And it was going to be part of our Florida vacation. So she had this all mapped out. And we drive and drive and drive and drive. And we get down Carolina someplace where the, you get catch this ferry boat. And we got there late in the day. And when we pulled up, the very last ferry boat had already gone out for the day. And we didn't have any reservations for a hotel. And the guy there running the ferry boat thing, dispatcher, whatever you want to call him, he, he told her, he says, well, next boat goes out in the morning, such and such time, 8 o'clock or whatever it was. And he says, uh, so... You can sleep here in your car if you want to, or you can go try to get you a motel someplace, but I don't think you're going to have much luck find a motel. Well, we decided, she decided, that we was going to spend the night in the car, the four of us, her and dad and me and my brother. And they had this um, restroom. It's kind of like an outhouse. And it stunk. Lord have mercy, it stunk. And uh, hot. We had air conditioning in the car, but, you know, in order to have the air conditioner run, you had to run the car, which meant you was going to lose gasoline. And we spent the night, most miserable night of our lives. Nobody got any sleep. It was absolutely horrible. And when you would go into this outhouse, the Skeeters was in the toilets. They would eat you alive. Man eating skeeters, biggest skeeters I ever seen in my life. I swear to God, they carry you off. And the next morning, when the guy comes back, you know, running the ferry, I don't remember if it was the same one or a different one, but anyway, the feller that that got folks on the ferry boat tells us that if we get over to this island that we wouldn't get off of for a week because there was a week backup of people wanting to get off the island. Well, that wasn't going to work for the schedule. So we had to go back the way we came until we could get to the interstate to head us back down to Florida and drive. And I had to stay awake because I had to keep the driver awake, her or dad, whichever one was driving. And they would go to nod off and I'd have to wake them up keep them from killing us i was ate up with skeeter bites oh good gravy i was nothing but a big scab and when we finally got to a motel i could not wait to get in the swimming pool i was like oh lord have mercy let me get to a pool and so i got in my swimsuit and i went out and jumped in that pool and that chlorine water hit them skeeter bites <gasps> oh oh Good gravy. Like somebody had lit you on fire. We finally got down Florida where we needed to go. And uh, we spent a couple days in the hotel that she booked before we went to see the relatives because, you know, <laughs> it's nice to see them, but you don't want to be there long, you know, and uh, we spent a little bit of time with them and then headed back. 
and I'm pretty sure I slept all the way home. That was probably the most miserable vacation that I'd ever been on in my life. The last vacation I went on was with my husband. It was kind of a honeymoon, but it was several months after we got married, and he wasn't there for most of it. He was uh, teaching at a seminar, and it was in Anaheim, California at the Disneyland Hotel. And it was in December. We got married in September, and and December was a seminar, so we flew out there and took that in. And we saw a few sites before we got to leave. Um, he took me down to San Diego, where the Queen Mary was, and we saw that. And we went to Universal Studios. I've got some really nice pictures that I took at Universal Studios. Um, ones of the, uh, I'm really proud of it. it it's the uh, house that they filmed Psycho in. And I got the picture right at sundown. So the sun is sitting behind the house and the house looks like a silhouette. It's a really cool picture. Okay, this is the last section that we have to paint. And it's taken me a little while to do it, but I think it's been worthwhile. It's pretty peace. But you could do this with any kind of acrylic paint. It doesn't have to be the pearlescent. But when I was looking my paints over, getting ready to do this project, I thought, oh, yeah, that pearlescent paint would be so pretty. They have three-dimensional acrylic paints out now, too. And with those, you lay your paint in, and then you hit it with uh, some heat, and it makes it three-dimensional, and that would be cool paint to use. I don't happen to have any of it, but I've seen the paint advertised. Or metallic paints would be cool. See, there's no pencil line showing from where I've laid my design in as I've painted over them good. Got my paint laid in nice and thick, giving a little dimension to the to the painting, gives it a little more interest, I think. And there you have it. I'm going to lay a little bit more. Got a little more on the palette here. Right here in this section looks like it could be fluffed up just a little bit. Give it a little more texture right in there. I don't like seeing canvas under the painting. All right. There you go. All done. Please check out my Etsy and my Patreon stores. All the, the uh, URLs are down there in the description of the video. And I do a live Twitch stream on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. I also do a live stream on YouTube um, where we just kind of visit. Uh, it's at 8 o'clock on Monday nights. And that's Eastern Time as well. I'm on Twitter. I'm on uh, Instagram, I'm pretty easy found. It's Brenda G's Designs, every place you look. 
And with all that being said, I guess there's only one thing left to say, and that's Brenda's crafty. Be like Brenda. <laughs>